What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hello to the FRT community. I got a question here from Jose Gallardo who wants to know if you have a patient in assist control, pressure control. Okay, so we're in pressure control ventil ventilation in the assist control mode. He understands what's going to happen if you have um, increased airway secretions and you'll have a decreased tidal volume. If you have a decrease in your endotracheal tube size or if you have a super small endotracheal tube, what's going to happen to tidal volume? Or with your COPD patient, he understands all of this when it comes to pressure control. What his question is, is what happens to plateau pressure and static compliance during these times? Okay, so we're going to answer this question like this. Now remember, we're in AC, PC. Now, the AC is really not important here, except for the fact that you know every breath is going to be a machine-controlled breath. Okay, so you're talking about... Um, Increased airway secretions, a smaller ET tube, COPD. This is specifically from your question, right? Now, what we know about this is that these two, okay, have, are going to increase airway resistance. Increased airway resistance in pressure control equals a smaller tidal volume. Okay. Now COPD gets a little gets a little more complicated, so we're gonna we're gonna wait on that for just a second. Okay. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. Okay. But we know that that secretion airway secretions, excessive airway secretions, and small endotracheal tubes increase airway resistance and increased airway resistance. In pressure control results in smaller tidal volumes. So equals tidal, smaller tidal volumes. Now the question to this is, is what does this do to plateau pressure and what does this do to static compliance? To answer that question you have to understand what plateau pressure and static compliance tell you. Plateau pressure, I'm going to put it right here, plat equals alveolar compliance. Static compliance equals and is representative of alveolar compliance. So here we're talking, whether you're talking plateau pressure or you're talking static compliance, you're talking about just the compliance of the alveoli. Now with these two scenarios here, we know that they increase airway resistance but they don't affect alveolar compliance. Now, of course, excessive secretions can lead to mucus plugging, which can lead to atelectasis, and that can affect alveolar compliance. We get that. We're not going down that road right now, okay? We're just talking specifically just the details that were given. Increased airway secretions equals an increase in airway resistance. A small endotracheal tube equals an increase in airway resistance. Now, when you talk about airway resistance, you're talking more about dynamic compliance. And airway resistance will decrease your dynamic compliance because dynamic compliance is the compliance of the not the compliance of the alveoli plus the resistance of the airflow moving through the airways. So, you will have, in this case, you'll have a decreased dynamic compliance, but a normal static compliance. These two things right here do not affect plateau and static compliance. Okay? They just don't. They're not... You have to understand, what you almost have to do here, Jose, what you almost have to do here is take the examples you gave. Okay? I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to erase COPD for a minute too here, okay? Because we're going to finish on that, okay? Because that's a different animal. Let's say we were in AC volume control. And you have increased secretions and a decrease in the tracheal tube size. Then these two things in AC, VC will be an increase in your PIP, but no effect on your plateau. 
Now the reason I switched to volume control is because when you're in pressure control, you have pressure goes up and holds and comes back down. In volume control, pressure rises and falls, right? That's, how it, that's the difference in the pressure waveforms when you're looking at pressure control versus volume control. Now understand, to assess plateau pressure so that you can further assess static compliance, you have to be able to perform an inspiratory hold. When you perform an inspiratory hold, which by definition is mechanical ventilator, when I do a hold, I want you to hold the breath that you delivered then you have to understand that in pressure control, when you do a hold, the, vault, the pressure is going to stay right here. Why? Because pressure control, remember you told the vent, hold the pressure, I'm, I'm sorry, hold the breath that I told you to deliver. Well, you told the vent in pressure control to deliver a pressure of, let's just say, 24. So it's going to hold that pressure at 24. So you're not going to get a drop. You're not going to get that dip to see what the alveolar plateau pressure is versus what the peak inspiratory pressure is. In pressure control, PIP and PLAT will be the same. You can't differentiate between the two because the vent is holding at a pressure. Here we're talking 24. Now over here, when you do an inspiratory hold, the vent gives the set tidal volume right here. And then when you hold, you see this. This is your plateau. This is your pip. The difference between the two is a reflection of your airway resistance. Remember, you use pip to establish dynamic compliance. You use plat to establish static compliance. Now if you don't get these varying pressures because in pressure control the vent says I'm told to hold so I'm just going to hold the pressure. And you're not allowed to see that tidal volume settle in to the alveoli then you can't assess plat. Okay? In volume control you can assess plat. You can see what happens to the tidal volume or the pressures after the tidal volume is delivered. You deliver a tidal volume of 400, it goes through the airways, that generates a pip, and it extends the alveoli, that generates a pip, and then you hold it. During that hold, airflow through the airway ceases, and you get a settling of that tidal volume at the alveolar level, and that is your plateau pressure. So, what do we know? When we think about it like that, Okay, you have increased secretions or you have a small endotracheal tube. What you'll see, I'm going to erase both of these. What you'll see in pressure control is a smaller tidal volume. What you'll see in volume control is a higher PIP, which I already have written right here, right? Now, on the graphics, when you look at them, your pressure control will look like this. If you do an inspiratory hold, it'll continue holding. On your volume control, if your PIP goes up but your plat stays the same because these are airway resistance problems, then what you'll see is this. To where this is your PIP and this is your plat. Now, this has elevated or gone up higher because of the increased secretions or because of the smaller endotracheal tube. But then those volumes settle and you get a plateau pressure. This difference right here is an indication of your airway resistance. If you remember your airway resistance formula, remember raw equals pip minus plat. That's pip minus plat, this number minus this number, divided by the flow in liters per second. So 
you, you almost have to think about this in a different mindset. If I wasn't in pressure control and I was in volume control, what would I see? Well, I would see my plat be no, remain normal, but I would see my pip rise. So in pressure control, what happens to plateau pressure or what happens to static compliance when I have secretions, excessive airway secretions or decreased or a small endotracheal tube? Well, even though the vent won't show it, you still know that it does not affect your alveolar compliance. It doesn't affect your static compliance because these are airway resistance problems. Okay, so while this doesn't show a drop, the answer to your question is in pressure control, your alveolar, you, 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 in pressure control, other than your tidal volume, you really have no way to, to assess, to differentiate between an airway resistance problem or a static compliance problem. You have no way to differentiate because the pressure is held. In volume control, you can easily differentiate between an airway resistance problem such as increased secretions, airway secretions, or small endotracheal tube size. You can easily differentiate between an airway resistance problem or an alveolar compliance problem by assessing this drop between the two, okay? Now, I'm going to take this down here. And we're going to talk about COPD. Now, COPD actually leads to an increase in alveolar compliance. So, when you go to pressure control, you put a COPD or on pressure control, you're actually going to need smaller pressures, less pressure to generate adequate tidal volumes. When you go to volume control, your tidal volume that you have set is actually going to generate a smaller pressure. Okay, a less of a pressure. Because COPD, through the destruction of the distal airways and the alveoli, actually leads to big floppy lungs. So you're not really going to see, you can't, you can't put COPD into the category of increased excessive secretions or super small in the tracheal tubes because there you're talking about an airway resistance problem and with COPD you're really not talking about airway resistance problem yes they have a chronic bronchitis component that can can cause bronchospasm and yes that will address things but the the, the disease state itself from an alveolar compliance actually leads to improved I say improved but I mean Increased alveolar compliance, but not in a good way. In a good way to where in in a in a it's actually a bad way because the increased compliance means that they've lost the elasticity of those alveoli. Okay? So understand that COPD causes an increase in your alveolar compliance. So in pressure control, this will lead to increased tidal volumes with less pressure. In ACVC, you will get decreased pips and decreased plats with your set tidal volume, whatever it may be. Okay? So I want to clarify that right there. You got to understand your anatomical alterations. Don't classify COPD as an airway resistance problem. It's not like asthma. Asthma is a pure airway resistance problem. So asthma you could put back in the previous conversation. A patient with asthma, you could easily talk about, so we say we have asthma now, and this patient is in acute status asthmaticus, so they're, they're bronchoconstricted. Then you're going to have decreased tidal volumes in pressure control, in volume AC, you're going to have increased pips, but normal plats. So once again, you'll see this type of pattern. This is your pip. This is your plat. The difference between them is raw, divided by flow in liters per second, and that brings us back to the bronchoconstriction.
So, Jose, man, I know I kind of took this down a different turn when I brought asthma into it. I hope I answered your questions. If I didn't, I want you to ask another one. I want you to say that makes sense, but I'm not. I'm still not sure on this, um, and I can clarify it for you, okay? To everybody else out there watching this video, I hope it makes sense, and I hope it helps you. You got to be able to differentiate between airway resistance problems and alveolar compliance problems because they will show up differently in your volume control pressure waveform. In your pressure control pressure waveform, the vent holds at the pressure you set it, so you can't differentiate PIP from plateau. You can't do it. So you have no idea if it's an airway resistance or an alveolar problem because both of them will cause a decrease in tidal volume. You have an increase in airway resistance or you have a decrease in your static compliance or, or, or decrease in your alveolar compliance. Those will both cause a decrease in your delivered tidal volume when you're in pressure control. So you can't differentiate between the two unless you do further analysis of your patient. You can get there a chest x-ray, you know, auscultation, things like that. You can figure out if it's alveolar or if it's airway. But just by the pressure waveform itself and pressure control, you cannot differentiate between an airway resistance problem or an alveolar compliance problem because the mode itself does not allow for a plateau pressure to be assessed. A true plateau pressure. It's not assessed. It's going to hold at that same pressure. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Hope everybody's having a great week and best wishes.